it is that time of year again and that is it's time for the lifeline book fest i'm so excited i'm on my way there now once a year it's this enormous book fair they have old rare books i get my sewing books from there anyway let me take you along and let's see what treasures we uh, uncover today So you're probably thinking, just what is the Lifeline Book Fest anyway? Lifeline is a charity organization run here in Australia and they really help out, well, people who are doing it really tough. They have uh, many uh, thrift stores, what we call op shops here in Australia, and they raise funds that way. And one of their big events is this actual Lifeline Book Fest. It is like bookworm dream. It's huge, you saw it, right? It is enormous, there are so many books, I couldn't even, there must be millions of books there, I, yeah. So all money raised actually goes to support their charity, which is really good, and you can actually donate your old books while you're there too. But the most exciting thing out of it, of course, is the books that you find there. They have a few different sections. My favorite, of course, is the rare and like out of print books. They have really old things. You rummage through, your hands get filthy. It's fantastic. I love it. I love the rummage. You know I love a rummage. First wonderful book I unearthed there is this little one here, Dress Making Made Easy. This one is by uh, Laura L. Bella. Baldit of the McCall company. Mm -hmm. Dressmaking made easy. Looks very old. I was very very surprised when I opened this one up to find it is from 1928. Yeah. Okay so what's in this one? Uh, a picture of dear Laura here um, about the author, home sewers workshop, how to fit your body, how to take measurements. You know, these are sort of made for the home dressmaker who kind of already knows how to sew a little bit. So it's teaching you like how to fit patterns and oddly enough, it looks like they're showing you how to do everything sewn by hand in here. Oh no, look at this. Someone's kid got to this with a blue crayon. How awful. So this is a real delight. I don't actually have um, a dressmaking book from the 20s, so this is really special. I can't wait to sort of go through and um, have a little bit look, more look at how they uh, construct the fit uh, in particular for that time period and the little adjustments they make and the tweaks and how it's supposed to fit your body from that time period. The next book I found is Mary Thomas's Dictionary of Embroidery Stitches. Yes, again, it looks very old. That's how you know it's a good one. It's always the unassuming books that you can't tell what it is. You have to pick them all up and you have to look at them all to find these great old ones. So this one here is from 1934. Now this particular book is just literally as it describes, a dictionary of all these embroidery stitches. So it's just going through stitch after stitch after stitch and telling you how to do it, what it's called. It's incredible. I have not done much embroidery or anything like that myself yet, but it is something that I hope to delve into uh, sometime when I have more free time to start up another hobby or a sideline hobby on sewing maybe. Uh, so this one will be fantastic and I just like, I love, I love referencing the old books uh, for this sort of thing. So this one is a real treat. This will come in handy on my in when I take up embroidery. This next one is the Pictorial Guide to Modern Home Dressmaking. Now, I picked this up and I thought, I already have this book. Don't I? I wasn't sure. It looked the same, but different. And I was, of course, panicking and look at this great book. Look, look at all these pictures in here. Is amazing. So this one is from, I don't think it has a date, judging by the photographs, late 30s, early 40s. But I thought, oh, I couldn't remember if I had this or not. And of course, panicking and didn't want to miss out, complete FOMO, I got it anyway. So, well, wait a minute. Let's go see if I already have this. I know it's here somewhere. Hmm. Wait, I know. That 
that is fantastic news. They're actually different books, obviously from the same series. The one that I've got on dressmaking, I thought looked different. It has more pictures of like um, pattern construction and fit and all that sort of thing. That's why I thought it was different. This is even better. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm so glad that I didn't just buy a copy. This one is even better than I think just the Needlecraft book. Well, I am glad that I sorted that one out because now I have two of these wonderful books and the next one actually uh, comes, I think, from the same, um, well, they look very similar. This one is the Practical Knitting Illustrated. Again, I don't do knitting, but I think that I will at some point and I always want these really old books. This one, again, you can tell just by looking at it, it is late 30s, early 40s. There we go, someone's got an inscription on here of August 46. Mm. Okay, seriously, look at this knitted swimsuit. If I'm ever going to take up knitting, it is certainly to make these cute, cute, cute swimsuits like that. Yeah, great illustrations. I mean, of course, this is just goobity gook because I don't knit, so I don't know what this means yet. Though, of course, again, if I do take up knitting, I think that I will at some stage in my life. I'll give it a try. I want to reference the really old things and have those patterns and the know how to make those cute designs that I really love. So another one to my collection. A collection which is growing a lot thanks to the Lifeline Book Fest and finding all these beautiful old books. I just love the rummage. Okay, I have a confession to make. I may, did, go back for a second time to the book fair. So I have another lot of books to actually show you and I do want to show you because they are great. There's some really, really good ones. So I want to show you those. So I went back on the last day of which they have everything is usually half price or less than half price. So, you know, I'd had uh, the day off and what else am I supposed to do? I really felt like a rummage and it was the best place to go. Let me show you. So I found this little one here, Streamlined Dressmaking. Cute little book from the 60s. Uh, I don't usually go for them so much, but look at all the little uh, drawings in here. Look at these. Aren't they so cute? There's like, it's full of all these beautiful illustrations. It's got all of these um, like embellishment pattern making. How do I look at all of this? Just demonstrating and telling you all the different types of like applications, like decorative applications you can use. Just the cutest illustrations from the uh, 60s here. I think this one is 66. Oh, this one is adorable. This one I cannot believe I found. It is called Thrift with a Needle. I know right as soon as I saw it, it's like this is perfect for me. Thrift with a Needle, the complete book of mending. <sighs> from 1954 by Charles Scribner's Sons. I think this used to be a library book at one stage because it's got the uh, marks here where you know you used to have the library cards that would go in a long time ago. Now this goes into detail about like why to mend, which come on, we all know why we should mend. Then some equipment and basically it goes through step by step some of the like most common things that you usually be uh, mending and how to do it. And particularly um, this is great because it has like vintage type garments it's made in the 50s so they're constructed a certain way um, you know there's things in here like how to fix um, holes in different types of fabrics how to fix buttons that have all stretched out and loose buttonholes how to fix the um, like the shattering under the arms I know it's a huge one right I see that problem all the time and seeing how they recommend you do it in here is fascinating to me and there's some great tips in here that I really I really want to to try um, I'm so excited about this one uh, if you didn't know um, on Instagram I well I haven't done it for a little while actually but last year uh, I was doing a hashtag on Instagram called um, Monday in mending uh, it was in order to actually just like get through my pile of mending that just kept accumulating. I just wouldn't do it. So I just needed like a bit of motivation for myself to actually just like get it done. Um, you know, mending is so much better for the environment. We do not need to throw away clothes. We can easily mend them and it's just a prompt to kind of get through it. So here's what I'm thinking. 
this is fantastic. There are some great things in here, um, how to repair clothing that I think are skills that we all need. I'm thinking about starting up uh, Monday Mending again. Um, and I could even do a video for it here as more of a little bit of a tutorial and show you through how I maybe do some of the things in here. What do you think? But my biggest question is if we do it, should I call it Monday Mending, which I did before, or should we call it Make, Do and Mend Monday? So if you're unaware, Make, Do and Mend is a slogan that they use during the uh, World War II times to kind of um, just make do with what you had because there were such restrictions on fabric uh, and clothing that you couldn't really get anything new. So you just had to make do with what you've got and reuse and recycle and get creative and do that sort of thing. So Make, Do and, Mon make, do and Mend Monday is kind of um, in... Uh, tune to to that and just picking Monday so that you have a day of the week when it arrives that you know that it's time for mon for Monday mending to do your mending on Monday okay leave your comments below which one should I use Monday mending or make do and mend Monday let me know which one you think Okay, moving right along, the next enormous book that I found is one of these, A Pictorial History of the Silent Screen. Uh, I have one of these uh, similar and I love it. It is enormous, as you can see, and it is full, full, beautiful black and white images of all the screen goddesses and all of the film stars from the silent screen. So it's like uh, 1900 to about... Uh, last one here is the late 20s uh, that this goes to. I don't know whether they're still doing silent movies then, but if you love looking for how to do like vintage hairstyling and clothing, of course, and just want to see like more and more, these are so good. You'll probably find my hairstyle in here, I'm sure, in the 20s somewhere. Just fabulous. There's so many outfits after outfit after outfit. Beautiful inspiration for you to see how you can sort of capture these looks and bring it into your own wardrobe today. So I definitely recommend always getting books like these. Uh, I love them. I love them. Just pictures. Full of pictures. And the trick is, this one is from 19... 53. The trick is the old ones can be really, really nice because they have a more vintage eye on the more vintage items before that rather than someone just picking what they find aesthetically pleasing now. They've picked images which they found that were pleasing in 1954. So that's always interesting. The very last book that I got is this one here on beading. Now I don't normally get too many modern books like this, but um, this one's really great. So beading is something you can add to anything and there's so many different ways that you can bead. It goes through supplies and how to do things. It's got different jewelry, which I've already sort of done that before, but let me show you the one, pretty much the reason, the whole reason why I got this book. This section, big mad tassels. Look, step by step, how to do it. Look at this thing. It is crazy. Look, it is fully beaded tassel. Imagine this could use it for so many things think like 20s oh. and uh, things like this here like beading um, like trims around the edge so you've got that like f um, fluttery like loose beaded trim around the edges it's like details on how to do a few different ones of those which is something I am very interested in now let me know about the amending uh, idea which hashtag you like and which one I should do if you're interested in that and please like this video if you liked it and remember if you know someone who might be interested in seeing this do share it I would be so grateful so I really hope you enjoyed seeing my little book haul here and the different kind of things that are out there and where you might be able to seek inspiration and have a look, see what's there so you can find these things yourself hopefully. You know what to look for, it's easier to find them. So that's it for today and until next time, bye.